Yum, yum. Welcome to this introduction to render passes in Modo. The idea behind render passes is that you can have several completely different scene states saved in one document and you can change between these scene states anytime you like. And as well as being able to switch from one scene state to another at any time, you can also render them all in one go using the bucket renderer and the render passes command. But before I go into any more detail, I'm just going to quickly demonstrate what render passes actually do. In this scene, I've already created a pass group called lighting with two passes called option one and option two. But currently, I'm not in either one of these passes. You can see it says none here. So this is the default scene state. So what happens if I change from the default scene state into a render pass? Well, my lighting is going to change because that's how I've set it up. So let's go to the passes and select option one. And in option one, I've set up my lighting completely differently, as you can see here. Let's now switch to option two and see what happens there. And so in option two, I've got different lighting once again. And if I switch back to none, I'm going to return to my default scene state, which we saw earlier. And so this is a really good way of creating variations within a single scene. And it's also really useful for exploring different ideas. So for example, if you want to experiment with your lighting, which is something that I personally do all the time, you can create a bunch of render passes just exploring different ideas, and then you can pick the ones that you like best later on. So how do render passes actually work under the hood? Well, let's take a closer look at that. So I've switched to a different version of my scene where I am using lights rather than an HDR environment to do the lighting. And the reason that I've done this is so that I can show you exactly how powerful and versatile render passes are in Modo. So to begin with, let me explain exactly what is stored inside a render pass. Basically, any value that can be stored in a channel, and that means any channel on any item in Modo, can be stored in a render pass. So what do I mean by a channel? Well, all of these values here in the properties form are channels. If you select an item and go to the channels viewport, all of the channels relating to that item can be found there. Or if I was to select one of the lights in the scene, for example, all of the channels relating to that light can be found here in the channels viewport, and some of them are also displayed in the properties form. And so that means that any of these values that you find here in the channels viewport or here in the properties form can be stored individually inside a render pass. And not only that, but you can also actually animate these values within an individual render pass, which means that you can have different animations in different render passes, even with a static scene level state. So before we dive in, there's a couple of viewports that are useful to keep an eye on if you're using render passes. The first being this channels viewport, which I've already got open here. The other one being the groups viewport. And that's because render passes are essentially just a special type of group in Modo. You'll see exactly what I mean when I create a new pass group. So let's call this lighting. And straight away, you can see that a render pass group has appeared in the groups viewport. And now if I create a new pass, you'll see that that is also going to appear in the groups viewport. So let's call this option one. And if I now click on the little plus sign to expand the pass group, and then I expand the passes, you can see my new pass option one has appeared. But at the moment, obviously, the render pass is completely empty. It's not any different to the default scene state because there's nothing in the pass. So how can we add channels into this render pass? Well, there's two ways. There's the manual method and there's the automatic method. So with the manual method, what you'd actually do is select individual channels and simply drag them into this channel section here on the group panel. So let me demonstrate if I just uh, select this light and I just select the position X, Y and Z channels. I can then drag them from the channels viewport into the channel section in the group panel. And that means that if I make any changes to the values of these channels within this pass, they'll be stored within the pass and be different to how they are stored at the scene level. Now, at this point, I think I should explain something pretty fundamental about how scene states work in Modo. So the way that Modo considers different scene states is as layers. 
At the very bottom, you have what's called the scene state. And above that, you have the setup state. Now, the difference between the scene state and the setup state doesn't really apply to render passes. It's something that you need to consider when you're doing animation. Your setup state is where you do your rigging and your scene state is where you do your animating. But for the purpose of render passes, you can think of the scene state and the setup state as being one and the same. They're essentially the scene before you create any passes. And so then the render passes are added as additional layers above the setup state. And if you like, you can think of them as being different layers in a Photoshop document where maybe you've got different camera angle, different lighting, different colors. Basically, any channel value that can be edited can be stored in a render pass. Okay, so now that I've manually added my position channels to the render pass, I can actually edit them. So I'm going to activate the transform tool. But before I actually move the light, I'd like you to have a look at these buttons here under the render passes in the UI. They say apply and discard, and you can see that currently they are grayed out. But keep your eye on these buttons and watch what happens as I move the light. As soon as I move the light, you can see that they now become active. And so what Modo has done here is that it's created an additional layer which is above both the setup layer and also the layer that represents our render pass, and this is called the edit layer. And the edit layer is basically a temporary layer where all of your changes are gonna be held until you either apply them to your scene or to a render pass, or you discard them. And so having the ability to discard any unapplied changes gives you quite a lot of freedom to experiment. For example, I've just moved the light, but let's say I'm not really happy with that move. Well, I can revert to where I was before by simply clicking discard, and you can see straight away my light jumps back to where it was before I moved it. And so that means you can make a whole bunch of changes and if you decide that you don't like them, you can then discard them. But conversely, it also means that when you do make a bunch of changes and you do like them, you actually have to actively apply them to the pass. So to quickly demonstrate, I'm just gonna move the light once again, but this time I'm gonna hit apply. And because I hit apply, those changes are now committed to the pass. If I go back to the scene level, you can see the light jumps back and as I switch back to the pass, it goes back to where I committed those changes. And as an aside, once you create a render pass group in your scene, this apply and discard mechanism is actually available even at the raw scene level when you're not within a render pass. Let me demonstrate. If I move the light in a completely different direction and I'm not within a render pass, I'm actually in the scene, you can see that the apply and discard buttons are available. So if I decide I don't like that change, I can simply discard it and I go back to where I was. But if I make any changes to the channels that are stored in these render passes at the scene level, I need to apply them if I want them to stick. And of course, when I go into the actual render pass, the light goes back to the settings that are stored within that render pass. So the scene and the render pass always have completely different settings for the channels that are stored within the passes. So just to recap, once you have render channels in your scene, any changes that you make, whether those changes are at the base scene level or within a render pass, those changes will have to be applied if you want to commit them. But what about the channels that aren't actually included within the render pass? What happens to those? Well, at the moment, I've only added the position channels to the render pass, not the rotation channels. So I'm going to activate the rotation tool. I'm gonna to make sure I'm within the pass. I'm not at the scene level, I'm within the pass. It's called option one. And I'm going to rotate the light roughly 45 degrees. Now, if I apply that change, it's going to be applied at the scene level because those particular channels are not stored within the render pass. So you can see that when I change back to the scene level, the light's gonna move, but the rotation that I've just applied is going to remain. You can see the light jumps, but it's still rotated. However, if I just quickly go and undo all those changes that I've just made, and then I go back to my option one pass, and if I now select the three rotation channels and add them into the channel section in the group viewport, and I now activate the rotation tool and apply the rotation, that rotation is only gonna be applied within the pass because those channels have now been added to that render pass. So you can see as I exit back to the scene level, the rotation has reset to what it was before. And as I switch between the scene and the render pass, both the position and the rotation are stored within the pass.
So I've reverted my scene back to what it was before I made those changes so that I can talk about the automatic method for adding channels to your render passes because obviously doing it manually every time you want to include a certain channel in your pass is going to become a chore pretty quickly. So here in my groups panel you can see that I've got my pass group called lighting and I've got the render pass option one already created. However, the channel section is completely empty, which means no channels have yet been added to this render pass. And what I'm going to do this time is I'm going to use the auto add button. So once I activate that, any changes I make when I'm in this pass group are going to have their channels and their values automatically added to the render pass. So what I'll do now is I'm going to select this light and I'm going to make some changes to it. So I've made quite a few changes to this light. I've moved it, I've rotated it, I've actually scaled it so that it's bigger and I've changed its color. And because I applied all of these changes with auto add enabled, all of these channels are now stored in the pass. And if I exit the pass and go back to the scene level, you'll see that the light goes back to where it was and all of my lighting, all of those values are restored to what they were before I made the changes. So with auto add enabled, it's much quicker to jump into a pass, make a bunch of changes and have them stored in a convenient and easy way. So the only thing to be careful with is that you want to be sure that you're making your changes in the pass that you intend to be making them. And if you're intending to make a change at the scene level, please ensure that you are actually working at the scene level and not within a render pass when you make those changes. Now Modo tells you in the viewport itself, if you're working within a render pass, you can see here just above my mouse pointer, it says lighting option one. That tells you the pass group and the pass that you're working in. And if I switch out out of the render pass back to the scene level, you can see that that then disappears and the viewport doesn't list a pass name. So when you're working with render passes, it's really important to keep track of whether you're working at the scene level or within a render pass when you make changes, especially if you've got auto add enabled. So if for example, I decide I want to disable this second area light at the scene level, but I absentmindedly end up working in a pass while I disable this, you'll see that that change is only then applied to that pass and not at the scene level. So let me just go to the item list, disable this area light. And now if I switch back to the scene, you'll see the area light reappears because I wasn't working at the scene level, I was working within the pass. The good news, however, is that there is actually a way to recover from this problem. So if I switch back to my render pass with the light disabled, what I can then do is with the light selected, I can look through the channels viewport and I can see which channels have been applied to this pass and which channels have been applied to the setup or base scene. So I can see that the visibility channel has been added to render pass option one. If I select that channel and I right click, I can use this menu to manage values between the render pass and the scene level. So the first command I'm going to look at is this remove action pass value. And what that will do is it will simply restore this particular channel to its current state at the scene level. So obviously I've made it invisible in the render pass. If I was to run this command, it would make it visible again because that's the state it's in at the scene level. And in this case, that's not what I want to do. What I want to do is to take the change that I made in this pass and apply it to the scene. So what I'm going to do is select the move action pass value to scene. And now when I go back to the scene, that area light is invisible. And if I now restore the visibility of this area light at the scene level and apply that, if I switch back to the render pass, the light will be visible because any change that I make at the scene level is going to be applied globally. So if you do accidentally end up working within a render pass when you meant to be working at the scene level, you can select the channels and push those changes back to the scene level. But what I tend to do is to be very careful. Usually I will disable the auto add button unless I'm specifically making changes within a render pass. And I'll always try and ensure that 
I'm out of the render pass unless I specifically want to be in there. So one workflow that's super cool with render passes is just experimenting with different variations. And one thing I really like to do is to use my instant lighting kit to create three or four different variations, lighting in a scene, and then just use render passes to either choose between them or to store all the different configurations. So let me quickly demonstrate. So I've just loaded the instant lighting kit and at the moment it's more or less at default values. All I've done is just to reduce the brightness of the default environment. So I'm going to go to my render passes. I'm going to create a new pass group and I'm going to call it lighting. And then I'm going to create a new render pass and I'm going to call this one option one. So automatically I am now inside the pass option one. So now what I'm going to do is to enable auto add and I'm going to make some changes to lighting. So I'm going to just change the controls on the instant lighting kit and just find a variation of the lighting that I quite like. So let's just make a quick change to the hue. Play around basically until I find something that I quite like. And once I've found something that I'm happy with, I hit apply and now and create a new render pass to explore further variations. So I'll call this one option two. And as you can see, as I create the new pass, the scene reverts back to its default state. It discards all the changes that are stored in the previous pass. These are still stored in the previous pass. If I return there, you can see the lighting changes come back. But when I create the new pass, the scene will go back to the default scene state. And so with pass option two active, I'm going to make some further changes. Let's change the environment to a completely different one. Let's rotate this environment and let's also reduce the environment brightness. And if I decide I'm happy with this, I hit apply and those changes will be stored within that pass. And I'm gonna carry on exploring. So I'm gonna create a third render pass. Let's call this one option three and let's change the environment once again. Let's try this one. Let's rotate it, something like that. And let's increase the brightness this time. And once again, if I'm happy with those changes, I can hit apply. So I'm just going to deselect the controls for the instant lighting kit. And you can see if I return to the scene level, we have our default scene state. If I go to option one, we have the lighting that I created for that. And then option two, which is gonna be different. And option three, which is different once again. So what I can do is I'm just gonna pause preview for a second and I'm gonna right click on this little orange dot on the left hand side of the preview viewport and I'm going to select copy from the menu that appears. And I'm going to use the slash and burn controls to split this viewport into four. So I'm gonna hold down control, shift and tilde and I'm gonna split horizontal to create two preview viewports and I'm going to do the same again and this time I'm gonna split vertical and do the same on the other side. And then I'm gonna resize this so it fills up more or less the whole screen. And I'm just gonna go back to my default scene state and I'm just gonna run preview in the top left hand side. And once this preview is clean enough to see the lighting clearly, I'm going to pause it. And then I'm gonna to switch to render pass option one and I'm going to run the next preview. And once that preview has cleaned up, I can pause that, switch to the next render pass and then run the preview below that. And what I'll do is once that's cleaned up, I will then pause it and run the fourth one. And so you can see that working with render passes in this way means that you can explore endless variations non-destructively and store each one in your scene. And that means you can then come back to them and compare them to see which one works best for you. And just to show you how far you can take this, I've got this camera scene and all of these variations were created with the instant lighting kit. So I was able to render them all out and store them as render passes non-destructively. And that means that I could then compare them to see which ones I liked best later on. So I just store all these low resolution previews just to decide which lighting variations were the ones that I liked. So I hope that you found this introduction to render passes in Modo useful and I hope it's given you all the information that you need in order to start working with render passes now. Thank you very much for watching.